Hey guys, we'll get started in about a minute. All right, it's six o'clock and we'll get started right now. So this is the second to last lesson of um, pre-algebra. And this is, we're gonna be talking about counting. So we'll start up, we'll start off with a simple problem. Uh, how many numbers are in the list from nine to 27? So you could count all these numbers, but uh, an easy way to do it would be just to subtract the biggest number by the smallest number and then add one and there's 19. Many people forget to, um, forget to add the one. They just assume if you subtract um, the biggest number, um, the biggest number minus the smallest number, um, you'll get the number of numbers in the list. Um, but that's actually one less than the one than the numbers. So subtract twenty seven minus nine, uh, and you add one, and it's, there's nineteen numbers um, in this list. Here are some other examples. How many multiples of four are between 25 and 101? So 25 divided by four is 6.25. So that's not a multiple of four. Um, and we have to find the, the smallest multiple of four in this list, which is 28. So that's our smallest number. And 101 divided by four is 25.25, that's too big. And four times 25 is 100. So 100 is the biggest number um, in this list. So uh, basically we're just counting by fours up from 28 to 100. And we wanna see how many numbers are in this list. Uh, we can divide every, each number by four to get this list, seven, eight, nine, all the way to 25. Uh, but this list is the same thing as, um, well, not the same thing. Well, this list, uh, 725, uh, we can just use the formula here. So you will subtract the largest number minus the smallest number and you add one. So 25 minus seven, um, that is 18. 18 plus one is 19. So there are 19 numbers in this list. And if you uh, subtract six from each number and make the smallest number one, uh, we can see here that there are, there's clearly 19 numbers in this list. At Brown High School, there are 12 players on the basketball team. All of the players are taking at least one foreign language class. The school offers only Spanish and French as its foreign language classes. Eight of the players are taking Spanish and five of the players are taking both languages. How many players are taking French? So let's start with, um, so let's start with how uh, the people that are taking both French and Spanish. So we wanna draw a Venn diagram here. Um, the, so, as you guys know, a Venn diagram, the play, the space that overlaps, that's, um, that's, that means both, uh, that includes both of the categories. So we have five players taking both languages, Spanish and French. So we put a five in the middle and we can find out how many people are taking Spanish first. So it says eight of the players are taking Spanish. Well, we have five people here in the middle already taking Spanish. So eight minus five is three. So three players are only taking Spanish and five players are taking Spanish and French. And um, now we have these two numbers, we can find out how many people are just taking French. So we just um, add these two numbers up, five plus three is eight. There are 12 players total, so 12 minus eight is four. So there are four players only taking French, three only taking Spanish, and five players taking both. So in these types of problems, you guys wanna solve, you guys wanna find out how many people are um, doing both. 
Uh, how many people are taking both languages first? Okay. And we have some challenge problems. So um, the first question, uh, I want you guys to find out how many numbers are in each of the following lists. Um, and I'll give you guys about 15 minutes to do these. Uh, you guys know the drill, typing your answers into the chat and um, ask me any questions. All right, so here's a hint for the um, the second list. So the first one's pretty straightforward. You just use the equation uh, we learned. Uh, but for this one, um, none of these numbers are divisible by any common number. So what we want to do is we want to make all of these numbers. Um, we want to make all of these numbers divisible by a number. So one way you guys can do this is to subtract one from each number to make all these numbers divisible by four. So 20, negative 27 minus one is negative 28. Uh, this becomes negative 24, negative 20, 32, 36. They're all divis divisible by four. And then we just um, simplify this list by dividing each number by four. It doesn't matter what the numbers are as long as, um, as, long as they are the same. There's, um, they have the same space in between them and they are the same numbers. Or uh, there are the same amount of numbers in the list. And for the last list, they're all, all of these numbers are divisible by three. So that's how you simplify these numbers, these lists.
Guys, when you're trying to find out how many numbers are in a list, remember to add one after you subtract the biggest number from the smallest number. Uh, for example, one, say I want to say I want to figure out how many numbers are in a list um, of one, two, three, four, five. So if I subtract one minus five minus one, there are four, and that equals four. And obviously, there are not four numbers um, in that list. There's five numbers. So you have to add one um, after you subtract those two numbers. Yeah, many people forget to um, add one. They just assume the range is the amount of numbers. That's incorrect. There's a difference between um, the difference of the numbers and uh, how many numbers there are. Yeah, you guys keep forgetting to add one. Don't forget that. All right, uh, I'll give you guys about two more minutes to solve these. It's okay if you guys didn't solve it. Um, just try your best and I'll go over it. Some of these are pretty tricky. Yeah, you guys are getting very close to these numbers. A lot of you guys are just off by one a lot of the time. All right. Um,
All right, uh, how about this? I'm just going to go over the answers right now. Uh, you guys can keep trying as I'm going over it, but I'm, I'll just show you guys how to do it, uh, the solutions. All right, uh, look at my whiteboard. Okay, so the first one is uh, 45 to 93. That's, pretty, that's fairly straightforward. So 45 all the way to 93. So using the formula, subtract 93 and minus 45, and then add one. Always forget this, always remember this part. Once you do that, you get 49. The answer is 49. And let me show you guys why you guys have to add one. It's not the range. So say I have uh, this list, one, two, three, four, five. So there are obviously five numbers in this list, but if I just subtract the biggest minus the smallest, five minus one, I get four. That's one less than the actual amount of numbers. I have to add one to get the actual number, five. So remember, add one. All right, uh, negative 27, uh, that list. So uh, obviously none of, the, none of these numbers have a common, uh, do not have a common factor. So what I wanna do is subtract one from each number. So then I get negative 28, negative 24, negative 20, and then dot, 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 32, 36. And now I can divide everything by four and I get negative seven, negative six, all the way to nine. So this is my new list. And then I can use the formula. So nine plus seven minus negative seven plus one equals 17. So remember, don't forget this part. All right, 162, uh, the last list. So this one, you can divide everything by three. And after you guys do that, you guys should get this list. 54, 53, 52, all the way to 22. So this is my new list. And, you guys, and as you guys can see, all of these numbers are consecutive. So when you guys solve these problems, you guys want to make this list. You guys want to make these lists consecutive. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they are um, consecutive in the beginning. You guys can you guys can manipulate manipulate them to make them consecutive. Uh, so then we use the same formula: the biggest minus the smallest plus one. That equals thirty three. All right, there are 220 students in my school. Not bad. 70 of them took French, 140 of them took Spanish, and 23 of them took both languages. How many of the students took neither Span French or Spanish? All right, so let me draw my Venn diagram. All right, we'll label this one F for French. We'll label this one S for Spanish, and we'll label this one B for both. All right, so there are 23 people that took both languages, 23. And 70, 70 of them took French in total. So we want to subtract 70 minus 23 equals 47. 47 plus 23 is 70. The, all of these 70 people took French. It doesn't matter that some of these people also took Spanish. Uh, we just want to know. Uh, the only thing that matters to us is that they took French. They can take both, but they, took, they also took French. So um, this is 70. And 140 of them took Spanish. So Spanish is the more popular language in this school. Uh, 140 minus 23 is 117. 
So 117 people only took Spanish, 47 only took French, 23 people took both. And then we add all of these numbers up. So 117 plus 23 plus 47 is 187. 87. And, uh, and then, so, um, so we know 187 people took, took a language, at least one language, but there are 220 students total. And we want to find out how many people didn't take a language. So it's 220 minus 187 is 33. So 33 people in the school um, didn't take any languages, any foreign languages. So remember, start with um, who took both and then use the rest of the information to find out who only took Spanish and who only took French. All right, the last one. I am waiting in the lunch line. I'm 18th in line when I'm counting from the front and 24th in line when counting from the back. How many people are in the line? So if I'm 18th in line, that means there are 17 people in front of me. Now let's count from the back. Um, if I'm 24th in line, that means there are 23 people in front of me. So there are 17 people in front of me and 23 people behind me. And then there's me. So here's me. And I count as one person. So the total number of people in the line is just these people is just these numbers added up, added up together. So 23 plus uh, 17 plus me plus one is 41. So there are 41 people in line. So the key to solving this problem is you wanna find out how many people are in front of you and how many people are behind you. And don't forget to include yourself. All right. So once again, a lot of you guys were really close. You guys might've forgotten to add a number or something like that, uh, but it's fine. All right, the multiplication principle. So we, uh, this is basically working with combination. It is working with combination. So you have three shirts and four pairs of pants. How many outfits consisting of one shirt and one pair of pants can you make? So I have three shirts and uh, four pairs of pants. And to solve this problem, we, we can draw um, a table. This looks like a multiplication times table, if you guys remember doing those. So pants, 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 shirt, shirt, shirt. Uh, we can find out how many combinations of each. So I can pair shirt one with all pairs of pants, that's four. Shirt two with all pairs of pants and shirt three with all pairs of pants. And I have 12, uh, total, combinations total, 12 total combinations possible. So I count, count the squares um, under uh, inside these double lines. Okay, another way you guys can do it is by using a tree. So I have shirt, 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 one, two, three. And I have four pairs of pants. So I can pair four pairs of pants with this shirt, four pairs of pants with this shirt, and four pairs of pants with this shirt. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve outfits. Same thing. Here's some examples. And how many ways can we form an international commission if we must choose one European country from among six European countries, one Asian country from, from among four, one North American country from among three, and one African country from among seven? So this is, um, so this is the formula we use to find out how many um, combinations we get or in this case, permutations. You guys will learn the difference later on, but right now we'll just call them combinations or whatever. We'll just, we'll just say they're combinations. So six representing the European countries, 
uh, one Asian country, uh, the four Asian countries, uh, three North American countries, and um, seven African countries. So I need to choose one from each. So I have six possibilities times four possibilities times three possibilities times seven, and that equals 504. So same concept as this, this is really three times four equals 12. But in this case, we have more than two factors. So we just, well, um, the concept to solve it is still the same. The method to solve it is still the same. We just multiply all of these numbers. Six times four times three times seven. And that's 504. And how many ways can we form a license plate using only digits? zero to nine and capital letters other than zero other than o and i because um o looks like zero and i looks like one given that each plate has six characters the first of which is a digit and the second of which is a letter so the first so we're pretty limited in our first two uh slots so the first of which is a digit so they are, I have 10 digits to choose from. So this number becomes 10. The first number is 10. All right, the second of which, the second of which is a letter. I there are 26 letters in the alphabet total, A through Z, but I can't choose O or I. So that takes away two options. So in total, I have 24 options. So this becomes 24. And the rest of the four slots, uh, I can use any any digit or any letter besides O and I. So 10 plus 24 is 34. So I have 34 options for the last four um, slots. So I just multiply all of these numbers together, 10 times 24 times 34 to the fourth power. And I get this many, um, possible, this many ways I can form a license plate, different ways I can form a license plate. 320,720,640 ways. Sorry, a lot of weight. All right. And how many ways can I arrange four different books from left to right on a shelf? So each time we fill in a slot, we lose an option for the next slot. So for the first slot, I have four books total, so I can choose from any of the four books. But once I put one down, I only have three options left. So this becomes three. I choose from um, one, one of the three. Um, I lose another book. So now I'm only down to two options. I lose one again, and I'm only down to one option. So then again, I multiply all of these numbers together, and that equals 24. So I have 24 options for this bookshelf. I, um, I guess I could uh, use books as an example yeah, that's that's going to take too long i'll show you later all right your math club has 16 members and how many ways can it select a president a vice president and a treasurer if no member can hold more than one office so the same concept as this each time we fill in a slot uh, we lose an option because you know one person can't be both a president and a vice president. That's too much power. So I have 16 members total to choose from for the first um, position. Uh, once that person takes takes that position, I lose an option. So the 15 people remaining can choose can fill in the second position. Uh, one person takes it, then I'm down to 14 people who can take the next position. And I only go down to 14. I only multiply three numbers because there are only three slots available. There are no more. There's only three positions available for this club. So I, and then I just multiply these numbers. So 16 times 15 times 14 equals 30, uh, 3,360. So for only, for only 16, 16 members and three positions, I can fill those positions in 3,360 ways. That, that seems like an incredible number. That seems too big to be true, but that is, um, that is true. There are this many options. 
So I can have a bunch of options with relatively few, relatively few people um, available to choose from. All right, so here are four challenge problems. Uh, type your answers into the chat. I'll give you guys about 15 minutes to solve these. And if you guys have any questions, um, type them into the chat and I'll answer them.
Yeah, for the last one. So um, when it says she has a large supply, that basically means she has an unlimited supply. So the numbers don't run out um, when I fill in the slot. So say I choose the number one for the first digit, um, I can reuse that number one for the next three. And that's different from the second to last one or number three. Um, and how many ways can five people stand in a line? Once one person fills in a slot, a place in the line, um, that person can't be also number two in the line. You can't be in two places at once. So in this case, um, my options do uh, decrease. And guys, it's um the answer is not one times two times seven times eight. These are the actual numbers. So like, say I put a number one in the first spot. Like that's not the number of options I have. That's the actual number I'm using. So um you don't multiply don't multiply these numbers together. Actually, I'll give you guys only five more minutes. Uh, we have a lot more slides to cover today. Uh, so this is unrelated to math, but I do, I can play some music for you guys if you want. So um, I'll play what you guys want to play. So um, if you guys have any song, if you guys have any song requests, um, just type them into the chat. <laughs> Someone said no. Yeah, so if you guys want to, so just type in your song requests into the chat and um, I'll play them. But they have to be appropriate songs, no cuss words or anything like that. So you, you guys choose. <laughs> the coconut song is that I kind of regret saying this funny songs. <laughs> All right, I'll play them. I'll play them for the next um, set of challenge problems. I I regret saying I regret um, saying this. Harry Potter nine nine. Yeah, I don't I don't think I've heard it before. <laughs>
do different states have different memes? I'm not I'm not sure what memes are in Seattle. I'll switch it up. I have a bad feeling about this. All right, um, one more minute. So type in your last minute answers into, um, into the chat. Yeah, actually, never mind. Forget I said any of that. I'm not playing any weird songs. All right, so I'm gonna go over the answers right now. I think you guys are getting confused that these are actual, um, these are actual possibilities. All right, so the first one. I suppose I have seven shirts and four ties. How many shirt and tie outfits can I make? Um, this one's pretty simple. Seven times four is 28. I have 28 options. All right, so say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have four for each. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, 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 four. four. So four times seven, 28. All right, for each of the nine colors, I have one shirt and one tie of that color. How many shirt and tie outfits can I make if I refuse to wear a shirt and tie of the same color? So let's start with, um, let's start with the number of possibilities he would have if he, if he is willing to wear a shirt and tie of the same color. Um, all right, so nine times nine is 81. So say, so if he can't, if he is willing to wear the same color tie and shirt, there are 81 possibilities, but that's not the answer. So there are, um, that means there are nine options. Um, so there are 81 possibilities total, but there are nine options um, not possible. He, he's not gonna wear red with red, uh, yellow with yellow, blue with blue. So that means I subtract nine options and that equals 72. So the answer here is 72. Mm. Oh, excuse me. All right, and how many ways can five people stand in a line? All right, so I have five people. All right, say, uh, so for the first slot, um, I have five options total. So I just choose, yeah, so I have five options total. But then I lose the person because this person is filling up the spot, this, um, this space. So five minus one is four. I have four options for the next space. And so on, three options for the, for the third, two for the um, second to last, and one person left. The one person remaining has to fill up this last spot. 
And then I just multiply all of these numbers together. So five times four times three times two times one, it is 120. So with only five people, um, there are 120 um, possible combinations um, to form a line, different possibilities. Yeah, thank you. I know they're lovely multiplication signs. I can't write neat with, with, the, um, with the mouse, so. All right, a shopkeeper sells house numbers. She has a large supply of the digits, one, two, seven, and eight, but no other digits. How many different three digit house numbers could she make, could, could be made using only the digits in her supply? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I, I have the numbers one, two, seven, and eight. These are, the, these are the options. So I have four numbers total here. So that, and there are three spaces available. So one, two, three. So I have four options. One, the numbers one, two, seven, eight. There are four numbers here. So I have four options for the first slot, um, four numbers for the second, and four numbers for the third. Because she has an infinite number of possibilities uh, for these numbers, so uh, these numbers don't run out. If I fill in this slot with the one, um, I still have more ones I can fill in these slots. So the numbers don't run out in this case. And once again, like we've been doing with all of these combinations, we multiply the numbers. That equals four to the third equals 64. So there are 64 combinations for house numbers. Yes, um, some, of you, some of you guys got confused. You guys actually think that um, there are seven combinations. Now like, I'm actually talking about the number seven, like the actual number, like not, not the amount. So that, was, that could have been a little confusing. All right, casework. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never heard of I've never heard of the term casework. Um, I found it in the book, but they call it casework. So we'll just say we'll just call it casework too. All right. The figure to the right over here represents a road map between four villages, labeled A, B, C, and D. The arcs indicate paths between the various villages. How many ways are there to go from A to D along the path? The paths, if you can only move left to right. So you can't go A, B, A, B, A, C, D. You can only go you can only go A, C, D, or A, B, D. All right, so, um, for, so if we can see from A to C, there are two possible paths. And there are four possible paths from A to B, three possible paths from B to D, and four possible paths from C to D. All right, so in this case, so um, these are separate possibilities. So we can't choose A, we can't choose B and C, we can only choose one. So we look at these as separate. So we choose, we choose A and B, so we multiply these possibilities. We can choose A, uh, we choose A, sorry, we choose B or C. This is a typo, we choose B or C, so we add. Is there a five? Oh yeah, there is five, sorry. Apparently I'm, as you guys can see, I'm, I'm blind. And my screen is lagging. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, from A to B, there are four possibilities, so four. And there are three possibilities from B to D, so there are 12. If I go this route, the top route, I have 12 possibilities. Now let's look at the bottom route. So I have two possibilities from A to C, and I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five possibilities from C to D, so I have 10 possibilities for the bottom route. But these are separate. Um, these are separate. I can't go, I can't choose B and C. That's not possible. I can only choose B or C, so that's why I add these two. So 12 plus 10 equals 22. So I have 22 options 
uh, possible ways I can travel from A to D. So the things to remember here is if it's and, we multiply. If it's or, we, um, we add. So we choose. So we have to choose one of these possibilities and one of these possibilities. But we can we uh, but we have to choose one of these possibilities one of these possibilities or one of these possibilities. So that's why we add. That's why we add those. All right. Uh, here are some examples. Um, some more examples. So on the island of A B C D E F, the alphabet only has six letters, and every word in their language has no more than three letters in it. How many words are possible? A word can use a letter more than once, but zero letters does not count as a word. All right, so once again, we have to add um, some, of the, some of these numbers. So say, so let's look at the one letter words first. So I have six possibilities um, because each, I only have six, six letters and um, this, each word can only be one letter long. So I have six possibilities for one letter words. And now let's look at two. I have six options for the first letter and six options again for the second letter. I multiply those and I have 36. And the same thing for the third, for three letter words, I have 216 options. So I add these up, six plus 36 plus 216 equals 258. So on the island of A, B, C, D, E, F, um, there, there, is a, there is a total possibility of, there is a total of 258 um, possibilities for words. So they do not have a very advanced language. Um, so they probably don't need to communicate very much. Right. How many pairs of positive integers a and B satisfy A squared plus B is less than 24. So let's try, um, let's, uh, let's try the possibilities if A equals one, two, three, or four. So let's say A equals one. Well, B has to be less than um, 24 minus one equals 23. So that means there are 22. Anything less than 23, so 22. Uh, same thing here. B, is, B has to be less than 20, so 19, less than 15, 14, less than 8, 17. These are all separate cases, so I add these up, and I get 62. Yeah, it is the, it is the weirdest island in the world. So, so um, there are 62 possibilities, of pos uh, possible pairs of positive integers that satisfy this uh, expression or inequality. I only have two challenge problems for you guys right here. I'll give you guys about seven minutes to do these. I want to make you guys, I want to give you guys enough time to have um, to play Kahoot at the end. So write the integers, write the integers from one to 150 inclusive. So that means including one in, one in 150. What is the total number of digits that must be written? How many positive three, three digit numbers have the property that the first digit is at least three times the second digit.
Yeah, these problems are harder. That's why I only gave you guys two. Yeah, so just try these. Um, it's okay if you guys don't get them. I know they're hard. Yeah, your answers, you guys' answers are very small. Um, you guys, the answers are a lot bigger than what you guys came up with. Uh, I'll give, I'll give you guys a hint. There are at least, um, they have, th they are, they are three digit numbers, um, for both of the answers. How much? Okay, about um, two more minutes. All right, about 30 more seconds. All right, um, I'm going to go over the answers right now. All right. So write the integers from 1 to 150 inclusive, so including 1 and 150. What is the total number of digits that must be written? So to solve this problem, I want to find out um, how many one-digit numbers there are, how many two-digit numbers there are, and how many three-digit numbers there are. So from 1 to 9, One to nine. There are nine digits. Uh, there are nine numbers and each number has one digit. So that means uh, from one to nine, there are nine digits. All right, so from 10 to 99, there are nine, there are 90 uh, numbers and each number has two digits. So 90 times two is 180. And now for the three digit, three digit numbers. So 100, 
uh, to 150. That is 51 uh, numbers and 51 times three is 153. Hang on. Okay. So um, now I have these numbers, these separate uh, digits. So all you have to do is add these up. So nine plus 180 plus 153, that equals 342. So from one to 150 inclusive, there are 342 digits. Yeah, Donald, you got very close to these um, to the answer. All right, how many positive uh, three digit numbers have the property that the first digit is at least three times the second digit? So say I have a number A, B. A, the first digit is at least three times the second. So I have options from zero to nine for digits. And I wanna test each of these out. So let's, let's make B, um, let's make B the smaller digit uh, zero. So if B equals zero, that means uh, A can be any number from one to nine. Hang on. Oh, three digit, three, three digit number. Sorry. So A B C. Yeah, and A is at least three times uh, B. At least three times the second digit. All right. So C, um, C always has at least C always has. C always has 10 uh, possibilities from zero to nine because there's no limits for C. All right, say B um, has one possibility, uh, which is zero. So B has one possibility. And A has to be at least three times B. So anything but zero, anything times, any digit besides zero times three is gonna be greater than zero. So this becomes nine. So then, and then once again, I multiply these numbers. So 10 times one times nine equals 90. All right, say B equals one. C still has 10 options. B has, still has one option. So C and B always stay the same. It's just A that changes. All right, so anything, so B equals one, that means anything um, from two to nine works. One times, um, yeah, no, anything, hang on, wait, hang on. Yeah, sorry. So one times three is three. That means any, um, all of these digits have to be at least greater than three. So uh, greater than or equal to three. So three to nine. That gives me seven options. So for if B equals one, A equals seven options. So 10 times one times seven equals 70. All right, say B equals two. C and B still, say this, still uh, stay the same, but two times three equals six. So now my um, A becomes even more limited. So that means I can choose any number from six to nine. So six, seven, eight, nine gives me four options. And this equals 40. And if B equals three, three times three is nine. And as you can see here, the only digit um, greater than or equal to nine is nine itself. So that means A equals one for the last option. So one times one times 10 equals 10. And then I have my separate um, possibilities. So then I just add these numbers up. 
So 90 plus 70 plus 40 plus 10, that gives us an answer of 210. So there are 200 possibilities of a, for a three digit number that satisfied this, um, this prerequisite. Uh, Donald, uh, parentheses host, uh, that Donald. Okay, so um, those are the two. Those were the two problems. So if you guys didn't get those, it's fine. Especially the second one was kind of tricky. But if you guys go step by step, you guys should be able to solve these problems. So just slow it down. Sometimes break down the problem into separate um, areas, and then um, and then that's how you solve um, these problems. There is an easier method. Seven times ten times three. Uh, that might. I think that might work. Uh, you can show me. You can show me that one later, actually. So. Oh, so Donald is the same person as Donald host. So same person. All right. Um. Here's some more examples. So a round robin tennis tournament consists of each player playing every other player exactly once. How many matches will be held during an eight person round robin tennis tournament? So here's the wrong solution. Each of the eight players play seven games. So there are eight times, eight times seven equals 56 total games played. This one's wrong because um, each player plays, uh, each, each player plays everyone else exactly once. If I use this method, um, each player plays everyone else twice. So um, to, to fix this issue, I just divide the total number of possibilities by two. So eight times seven divided by two is 28. We'll play Kahoot, um, don't worry, I won't forget. All right, this is a, so this formula here, this is a formula to add consecutive integers. So um, I gave you guys this problem from the, for the first lesson, if you guys were here. Um, add all of the numbers from 1 to 100. So k equals 100, the total, um, total number of numbers. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. 100 plus 1 is 101. So 50 times 101 is, is 5,050. Right. Five women and four men are at a party. If no two men shake hands, but each woman shakes hands with each other person, then how many total handshakes are how many total handshakes are there? Okay. Okay. So say um so each say say each woman shakes hands. So there are five women each. Each person, each woman shakes hands with um, four other men. So that's a total of 20 handshakes possible. Hang on, let me get the... Okay. Yeah, we will pick a hoot today. Um, I think I'll stop after this example. Uh, there are still more slides, but we'll cover it. We'll cover them next time. Okay. All right. So five times um, four divided by two equals ten. This. Um, is the possibility for uh, each woman. Hang on, wait. So here we have to divide by two. So that's four twice.
Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> Actually, I'll come back to this problem next time. All right, we'll get we'll we'll get back to it. Um, fifteen minutes left. Yeah, I think I'll stop the lesson right now. So, um, next time we'll start from we'll start from this slide. But we're gonna play a hoop right now, so I'll stop the lesson. Right now. All right, now I'm gonna hand it over to Emily. And uh, we're going to play Kahoot. And I'll let you guys unmute. All right, you guys can unmute now. Hello. Someone's copying Jeffrey again. He's not here. Okay. Yeah, well, he's not here to complain, is he? Yeah. The only Catherine? What the? <laughs> it's usually tell. Jeffrey 2.0. Jeffrey 4.0. Real Jeffrey. Not of these people. Why is everyone so obsessed with copying Jeffrey? I don't see the point. Does everybody like, like Jeffrey all the Suddenly. Not like Jeffrey's, that. Not, Jeffrey's not gonna be happy if he finds out. Jeffrey's famous. Jeffrey's never happy. So None of these people are real Jeffreys. None of these people are actually real Jeffreys. Jeffrey versus everybody else. Vote Trump 2020. Guys, avoid political statements. So um my teacher always says my um I type really loudly. Does anybody else think that? Mm, what do you mean by type really wildly? We can't even see you type, so it's not no, really. Li like I type really loudly, like like okay. like you can hear me type. Here, I'll type something. Uh, like, what do you want me to type? I can hear you typing right now. Just I'm type not even hi typing. Just type hi Bob on Mr. Boyle. <laughs> hi Bob. Okay, yeah, you type like really like. I think it's just your keyboard. No, I type like I type like this ever, on every keyboard, and they always say I'm loud. I have like three different keyboards I've typed on. They all say I'm really loud. What? Now I've got a school computer, and then there are gonna be people just gonna judge me even more. You have a what? You have a school what? I have a school computer. You do? Yeah, I do. Do you not? Oh, wow. I thought we were in the same grade. What's I SPD? What's SPD? Who knows what SPD is? Tell us. Actually, I don't I don't think I want to know. Chicken <laughs> Jeff. Jeffrey's not going to be very... Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not I don't know what's up with Fairwind's mic. Fairwind's mic all the time. Always, what is? What you the heck fall is off a cliff. Wow, what a great. <laughs> what the? What a great <laughs> question. What a great question. That is like. You. That is just amazing. The most. <laughs> You'll survive. You'll one hundred percent survive. <laughs> okay, you won't. You will one hundred percent survive. <laughs> No I don't know what the difference it would make if there was no if there was some people around. Well, do you have yes, to fly? Hmm. The next one is also you're flipping the coin. What is the possible? Oh, this one's easy. It's kind of obvious. Yes, yeah, five out of twenty. <laughs> it's five out of twenty, definitely. There's yeah. only two sides to a coin. 
No, let's pretend a 20 you're side, falling. A 20 sided coin. You're falling into a pool. You're falling into a pool. What's the chance of surviving? Yeah, let's just ask you a question. You fall into a pool. What's the chance that you know how to swim? Uh, one third. Why? <laughs> Who knows? Eight sided die. Huh? I don't know what you mean. What? Guys, remember to multiply. Um, how many people are on this game? There's like 13 people. Or 14. There's, 14. Like, There's 14, about 14 people, I guess. Hey. No, yeah, my first place. See, I don't believe. How why? I give up. Someone spam Jeffrey. Those are in this list. I'm counting. One, two. Time, 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 time to die! Can you please, oh, like... please don't do that. Farron, please stop doing that. Also, Farron kept on moving around. That was, like, literally the only thing I could look at this whole time. Jeffrey, four point oh. Okay, who's Seattle Police? Yeah, who is... <laughs> oh, Seattle Police Department. That makes sense. Oh, does anybody else here live in Washington or something? I live in Washington. No, I live in Cali. I live in Fun. Washington. As I you guys can see, Cali. my Sacramento Kings poster in the background. I live in Washington. Yeah. I live in Washington, too. Oh, my gosh. Maybe we will see each other someday. But we'll never realize it. Shut up. Wait, you still what, what grade are you in? I'm in... Going into. I'm going, going don't do that. I'm in, going into fifth grade. You're going into fifth grade? Yeah, what? Oh, you're taking a pre algebra oh, class. Man, I thought, I thought we were in the same grade. What, what the, the past two questions? Uh, oh, yeah, I know it. <laughs> I don't know if they, Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I, I just the last two questions. questions so I just guess. Now I realize. How do you? How are you supposed to like remember the last? Oh, how do you guys? Right? How do? How do you? Half of you guys forget to add one after all of that. It's more than yeah. half. I actually guess. Yeah, more than half. Mm. That's sad. Wait, Ethan, what school are you going to this year? I'm going to Overlake. Isn't that a hospital? No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um. Well, there is a hospital called Overlake Hospital. Wait, Overlake. What city is that in? Overlake. What in district? Seattle. You're, you're in the Seattle school district. Is that even district? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm behind real Jeff. The real Jeff would not be in ninth place. Okay. Donald, you're not real, Jeff. Real Jeff is not me. Also, you're not real, Jeff. Okay, for some reason, my volume just turned on really low. Jeffrey is getting an F for today. Do you actually have an attendance list? Yeah, I have an attendance list. I have a grade book. What? Wait, what? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you guys. How's everybody's grade? <laughs> oh, mine's melting already. You guys are all failing. Ouch. No, I'm just kidding. You guys are we all passing. We haven't even started school yet, and we've already failed. <laughs> are we gonna get? Are you gonna kill our teachers for driving around? And who is first place? Is it Jeffrey? It's not not Jeffrey. None of you guys are real, and I know it is QZPMWOXN. <laughs> Try saying that as a word. <laughs> They're both Jeffrey. Watson. Wait, who came last? What the heck? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright, um, mm -hmm. well, actually, short six minutes. Tricky game. I think we just end the lesson today, or um, like five minutes early. Screen sharing. Wait, everyone, no screen sharing. My nails are really long. I really need to cut them. <laughs>
Okay. All right. Well, if you guys don't, um, if you guys don't have any questions, that concludes our lesson for today. Oh, I have a question. I remember one class you mentioned that you said you were going to college next year. What college are you going to? Uh, I'm. St- I haven't applied yet, so I have yet to find out. But then, how do you know you're going to college next year? Because I will get into one college. I know that. <laughs> how do you know that? Why don't you just apply for every single college? They're gonna have to accept you into one. That's true. You know how expensive that is. College, then maybe I can see you someday. Well, the thing is, I don't want to. I don't want to apply to out of out of state. I want to stay in California. Oh. No, no offense to Washington, but I don't want. I don't want to. It's go very there. rainy here. Yeah, that's the problem. I just came back from camping today. It was very it's fun. It's actually not that bad. It's not raining. And it didn't rain. Oh my gosh, it didn't rain. But in the winter, it rains a lot. Is it snow in Seattle? A lot in a... Yeah, we snow a lot. I wish it snowed. I wish it snowed here. No, no, I mean, it's it's just a lot of rain and sunshine. It's not that fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> Have you ever been to Washington? I've been to Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Well, you should come here sometime and experience the rain. How about in winter break? You should come here and experience the rain every single I think day. winter time is the last time of the year I'll, I'll go. Someone's saying poop in the chat. Yep, that's fair one. <laughs> oh my god. You're spamming. That's true. Stop being hypocrite. Sorry. Sorry about that, Kyle. I kind of that's stop. Next no. class is the last class. I know. Are you guys excited? Not really, because this is just <laughs> my time just to sit down and pick out my nails. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to close the um, call right now. So, okay, bye, guys. Bye. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. I won. Yeah, I, won no I won. 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 I <laughs> won. All right, bye guys.